This time in grade 6 science, we made a simple electrical circuit. We connected a battery to a light globe with wires, and we made light. We felt good. But why did it work? Some of us said it worked because we made it work. But what really happened? My name is John Tringo. You may remember me from movies such as What Happened to My Turtle. Let me tell you what really happens. Inside a dry battery cell, there is a chemical piece made of metals and fluid, which essentially reacts with a carbon rod. The reaction causes an electrical charge. Basically, an electrical charge is atoms sharing electrons. Thanks, John, but we'll learn more about that in secondary school. The reactions or charges are held safely inside the battery until we connect a wire. Some materials are called conductors. They allow electricity or charges to pass through them more easily. Metal or copper wire, even foil, are conductors. Other materials like rubber are insulators. They don't allow charges to pass through them. The plastic coating around electrical wire is an insulator. So back to our wire connected to the battery. When the negative end of the battery is connected to the positive end of the battery, it creates an electrical circuit which allows for the transfer of energy. If we connect a wire from the negative terminal of the battery to the bottom of the globe and then connect another wire from the side of the globe to the positive terminal, we should create light. But how? Well, you may ask. I'll take it from here, thanks, Jade. Electric current travels around the circuit we have created. Inside the globe is thin wire made of tungsten. When the current passes through the tungsten, it causes it to heat up very quickly. When it heats, it produces a light. Inside the globe, the air or oxygen has been removed. If air was present, the thin tungsten would simply burn away. This is called a vacuum. These types of globes are very inefficient. Fluorescent or LED lights create less heat and are far more effective. But the book my teacher read didn't tell us about those types of globes. We asked how they work. He, he told, told us to Google, Google it. But first we wanted to see what would happen if we added more batteries to our circuit. You guessed it, we got brighter light. We had in fact increased the voltage. So we added more batteries. And more. And more batteries. Until we blew our globe. Once there was a break in the globe's tungsten filament, the current could no longer travel through the circuit. Our globe did no longer work! Do you need a tissue? Electricity itself could be created in a different way. There is static electricity and lighting. Both are cool but hard to get to run your toes. No toes for me. A magnetic field surrounded by copper wire creates an electrical charge when spun around very quickly. This is called a turbine. To make the turbine move and create electricity, we can use a variety of methods. Coal and gas are non-renewable fuel sources that are used in power plants. Wind and water can be used to create electricity as well. These are known as renewable sources of energy. Solar panels harness the heat of the sun and can also be used to create clean energy. Clean energy like wind and solar have less impact on our environment and that, my friends, is a good thing. Till next time, I'm John Trimbrose. I hope you enjoyed a sponsored edition of Grade 6 Science. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs>